Our next presenter is Joe Lindsay. He's an ocular pathology fellow, and he's going to be presenting on um, preventing PCO by intraoperative treatment of the capsular bag. Hello, my name is Joe Lindsay. I'm one of the ocular pathology fellows at Dr. Um, Malamus and Dr. Warner's lab. I have no financial disclosures. <clears throat> so, one of the major issues of um, cataract, modern day cataract surgery is um, post-operative um, capsular bag opacification. Uh, when we explore modalities that decreases this type of um, complication, it shows, it's, it's, it's very um, needed at this time. Um, before I start, I would like to just um, bring your attention to the schematic view of the crystalline lens. We know that it's made up of three layers, the capsule, cortex, and inner nuclear um, portion. But when you look at the, when you're looking at the pathogenesis of capsular bag opacification, it's best to divide it into two um, types of tissue, where you have E cells and A cells, and that's just based on the zone that they're in. So anterior versus equatorial. And they behave very differently, these two cells. Um, within the cataract surgery, we're, doing the, we're creating the capsule rexus on, on the anterior surface of the capsule. And when, when these particular cells are disrupted, um, the, the A cells in particular, they stay stationary um, and then undergo a pseudo fibrous metaplasia now with the E cells, which are located on the, the uh, equatorial cells, when they are disrupted uh, mechanically, they migrate posteriorly and then undergo opacification. A um, couple of examples are summering's ring or pearl formation. So it's, it's obvious the intervention, the perfect intervention for PCO. We could just go back to the traditional method of intracapsular cataract surgery. Any volunteers for that? So probably extra cap um, cataract surgeries are, are here to stay. So because of that, we're going to continually have this residual lens epithelial cells that are present to cause to cause havoc in the form of capsular bag opacification. So it's been well described six types of factors that help decrease PCO. Three of them are surgical, and three of them are IOL related. Now, surgical um, factors are going to remain constant. However, if we if we approach this issue from a different angle, there's a way we can circumvent the IOL related um, factors altogether. So, this presentation, we're going to talk about solutions that we could inject into the capsular bag within the surgery intraoperatively that will decrease opacification adding very little, little time to the surgery at whole. Genosphere is one company that created a, uh, a nano carrier. Um, here's a, uh, a model of that nano carrier where um, it's essentially a scaffold that allows connections to, uh, to maybe antibodies or proteins or other form of proteins as well as a cytotoxic agent. So in theory, what this, is, what this allows is internalization and cellular damage to specific types of cells. In our case, it would be the A cells and E cells within the capsular bag. And so our, our study design included five groups <clears throat> listed here. First group was just B BSS, second group was just DOXY, and then the third to fifth group um, included different components of the three components that I spoke of. And they were, and they were injected into the capsule um, after evacuation. So this is a, a flow of our, our study design. So we had 16 little patients that we used. All of them had the control lens, which is a hydrophobic um, acrylic single piece lens. And we performed slit lamp exams week, on a weekly basis for a month. Upon completion of the study, the animals were humanely anesthetized and then enucleated. 
Um, upon that, we were able to ex analyze the capsule of bag of pacification using both the Mayaki Apple technique as well as histopathology. And so these are images from week one. Um, and, and basically what you want to take away from this is that all the eyes had a very mild inflammatory reaction. So this is at the um, this is the final week, and there's a big difference. Let me just go back to the previous slide. So it's pretty clear there's a little bit of fibrin, but when we look at the the eyes at week four, um, significant PCO has already started being formed. But I want to draw your attention to the images that contain doxyrubicin. So it's going to be the second, third, and fifth. Um, and when you compare that to the other images, there's there's a notice, noticeable difference. Um, in, in, in where you see a very little to no opacification compared to the control models. <clears throat> and so this translates into statistical analysis as well, where we found that um, among the five groups, there were statistical significance, um, particularly when you examine the, the p-value. So these are great posterior views, um, looking at five uh, of the different treatment groups. And again, the same thing is translated post-mortem, um, where, you, where you have the second, third, and fifth image, which are the ones that include a doxyrubicin in different combination with the nanocarrier, compared to the control, where the control, there's significant opacification that's seen centrally in that first image and forming um, in that fourth image there. <clears throat> so I, I particularly found this, uh, this finding uh, impressive because both of these IOLs were placed in the same rabbit where the, the right eye was treated with just the antibody and DNA nanocarrier and then the left eye was treated with all three components. And there is a clear difference here, um, as you can know. So we did further um, statistical analysis post-mortem um, and, the, and the statistics were even more telling um, with even a stronger, a stronger p-value here. <clears throat> now, a second, a second company that we've been working with is Coda. And Coda um, created a, a gel-like substance called Nexagon that has already um, shown great promise within the field of, of wound um, care, tissue recovery, inflammation. And we're now adapting that into um, ophthalmic care, particularly in decreasing um, opacification, capsular bag opacification. <laughs> um, so Nexagon, there's been preliminary um, studies that has been already been used in glaucoma treatment, um, particularly in, in TRABS, and that shows great promise. Our study design is very similar to Genosphere. Um, but instead, we use seven um, little patients this time. And so this is the layout um, in terms of the treatment groups. Um, and I want to just focus your attention on the, just the last five. You notice that in the left eye, receive standard of care. And in the right eye, receive the, the Nexagon gel-like substance, which was injected into the eye intraoperatively. So standard of care just means no injection at all. So they receive BSS. <clears throat> so again, uh, this is images from um, post week one, it just showed a mild inflammatory process, which was seen um, in practically all the eyes. And then at week four, um, I just want to draw your attention to the first the control group, and you see um, just clear uh, opacification that is that is covering the the posterior um, surface of the IOL, but in and in the right eye, the eye that was treated with Nexagon, is significantly less opacification. And our, and our statistics um, <coughs> also um, confirm that, correlates with what we saw grossly. So this is at the end of week four. Uh, however, when we did the post-mortem um, analysis using the Mayaki Apple view, um, there, there, there's grossly uh, significance there. However, when we did the statistics, sorry. However, when we did the statistics for postmortem, um, 
it, it, it wasn't statistically um, significant. Uh, it's, this is histopath um, of the, the right eye of one of the um, little patients. And you see very little um, proliferative cortical material present. Um, and here uh, is the control eye. And if you, if you look at the bottom your, to your right, um, there's significant uh, proliferative cortical material present there. Um, as well as cortical material that is growing around the haptics, which are in the top two images. So when we, it, it's clear for Genosphere that there was a, a trend towards decreased opacification, and grossly so for CODA. Um, th this is a novel idea, a great idea, and we're moving in the right direction. Um, next steps would be optimizing concentration of these substances that we inject into the eye and just finding a ideal, ideal concentration. Uh, other, other things to, to note is, is just evaluating the role of the carriers um, and seeing the significance of it. And also just seeing how this technology could be applied to other areas within ophthalmology, not just decreasing uh, capsule bag opacification. I want to thank Dr. Mamelis, Dr. Warner, um, also my fellow co-fellows co uh, in, in the lab, and everyone else as part of the team. Here's my references. Um, any questions? Yes. Um, that's nice presentation. It's another topic that has a lot of potential to get pediatrics. But um, my question is, how, how exactly does this target lens epithelial cells, but then not corneal epithelial cells or ankle cells or iris cells? And that, do, do you think, I mean, I'm sure there's a, like, a mechanism or a theory, but do you think that actually you know, is perfect in that it, it seems like it should have some risk to all those other cells in the anterior chamber? All right, um, thank you for the question. So his question was, um, how do we know that it specifically targets the lens epithelial cells versus any other cells found within the eye? <clears throat> Great question. So Genosphere has done preliminary studies where they have um, been able to elucidate the pathogenesis of PCO. And what they found is a lot of these lens epithelial cells will undergo a uh, metaplasia where they transform into myofibroblasts. That and these myofibroblasts um, have specific proteins that are found um, on these cells. And so when they created the GA antibody, those antibodies are for those specific proteins that are found on those myofibroblasts that occur during this metaplasia process. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Nico? Uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, first question is, uh, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, you only get one question. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you think like your results in the first part of your talk is ma mainly due to Dr. Rubison alone? Uh, and then the second part is for the Nexagon. I didn't see the uh, what it's composed of, but for your control, uh, instead of BSS, can you use a gel-like kind of inert substance that Nexagon is made of as well? Um, to see it really clearly. Okay. Um... That, that's a great question, um, actually. So Nico's question was, um, is, is the, the, the results that we're seeing in particularly the Genosphere study, is it just due to doxyrubicin being there, or does the nano carrier, this 3D um, DNA um, carrier has a, a role in, in the results that we're seeing? I, I think that's a fantastic question. When we, when we, look, at the, when we look at the statistics, um, all the groups that had doxyrubicin showed decreased opacification. But the groups that didn't, the BSS, the group with just the antibody and the nanocarrier showed increase. Um, I, I think the answer to that question is very alarming, particularly to this, to this group, because it would be hard to just market doxyrubicin. You would, I, I'm just gonna stop there. but. Um, but, but that is a very good question and is a great observation. Um, we, we do have to do further um, analysis and, and seeing, seeing the role of the nanocarrier. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great observation, Nico. And your second question um, 
it was referring to Nexagon. Why do you use DSS instead of like the inert gel that you said Nexagon is made of? Mm. Yeah, good question. And so, I mean, a lot of research is, I mean, you, you, you go there and, and you're trying to brainstorm, trying to come up with the best method, um, trying to create the best control. Um, so during the time, so we did decide to use BSS. So we had seven rabbits in total. The Nexagon does come with a vehicle. So the first two rabbits, we used the vehicle um, for both eyes. And then for the subsequent five rabbits, we decided to use BSS as opposed to the vehicle um, in the control eyes. Uh, maybe Dr. Mammoth could elaborate a little bit more on that, but uh, it, it's still in the preliminary phase, and, and that's something that we're, we're definitely thinking about. You know, when we were doing the direct comparison, we're doing BSS, but we did do four eyes with just the vehicle to see what the effect of just using the vehicle mm -hmm. was. And interestingly enough, with just the vehicle, you actually had more PCO. And, and I think the reason for that was the fact that this is a very thick, jelly-like substance, and as you inject it in the capsular bag and the rabbit, it separates the capsular bag from the edge of the IOL and actually allows more space for the PCO to grow. So the vehicle without the actual treatment material in it actually led to even more PCO than it did just BSS. And so that is a sign to us that you know, the actual material is working as opposed to having the vehicle have any, have any prominent effect. Did that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Any other questions? Thank you for your questions, and thank you for your attention.